thank you all for coming today. I mean, it's a uh, really kind of an interesting show and one that, um, you know, celebrates Michael and his work. And if you go through it here, um, on, on the first level, we have, uh, there are 19 um, digital uh, prints on canvas that are framed. And this is the first edition um, that Mike has done anything like this. And we tried to do something that was good, and something that was tasteful, and something that was priced appropriately. And it's like, and so I mean, basically, we've done each one um, at 1800 to start out. Um, if you give them more than one, you know, you can twist me arm, I'll do them for 1500. Now, on the third floor is totally confusing for, for everyone. I mean, I've been an art dealer in a pandemic for the last, you know, years. I've been like reading about NFTs, and Michael's been doing it, and he's been ahead of the game. And he was the guy that, like, five years ago had people playing down outside of the arena down here, and had He's made the people as this NFT artist that recently sold something for $60 million. And, and at the time, you know, these guys just wanted some outlet. And, you know, Michael, you know, Michael being in the field and knowing everyone, he was able to put his own work. And some of the, some of the guys that are legendary in the NFT world, if, uh, even though it's such a fresh sort of thing, and no one really understands, well, I shouldn't say that. It's it's a different sort of twist than what we normally do. Upstairs, we've done its first eight NFTs. We priced them initially at three hundred and fifty dollars. The value is based in Ethereum, so if you go on the website now, it's like three hundred and fifty nine because the value of Ethereum is like. And then we can register you on the blockchain and do the whole crypto. And, Set up, you know, we can help you set up your account on your phone. It's something that's like very easy, and it's something that we practiced and have done. And these are minted things, and you also get a little card that will have your actual thing. So if you want to plug it into your TV, you can. But ultimately, you're going to be registered on the blockchain. We kind of start off the first group of eight at 350, just to be like, all right, if anyone wants one, if anyone wants one. Talk to me, talk to Michael, talk to Barbara, and Michael will take his computer and pull it down from OpenSea, and so that way it's locked away with yours. And then you can figure out the whole crypto wallet with, you know, Diego, or, you know, like, like he, he's sort of our crypto gallery expert now. Yeah, so Diego. Diego is still up there. Okay. Yeah, you can figure out your uh, <laughs> crypto wallet with uh, Diego, and he'll set up and kind of walk you through the steps. Upstairs, you have four TVs, each playing two of the different NFTs. We tried to break down something that was very complex into as easy a format as possible, but I still don't expect anyone to leave here having a complete understanding, and if so, you're a hell of a lot smarter than I am. But without, without any interruptions, Michael. Oh, thanks. Well, appreciate it, Buck. Uh, by the way, if, um, you are interested in more talk about NFTs, we're having a, a forum on September 22nd uh, about NFTs uh, and their relevance in the art market uh, on uh, from 5 p.m. Uh, here in the gallery on the third floor. So I just I made some comments here. I'd just like to thank Buck and Lisa and Barbara for trying out another one of my weird ideas. Uh, but actually, you know, I, I really do mean that genuinely because this is very new stuff for the gallery. Uh, Buck has always got ideas and always wants to go bigger with, uh, and better with this stuff. And I think I listen because I first wanted to sell these as little things and make small animations. But in fact, we've got a vision for this whole project to what it is today uh, with me. And so we've been really kind of trying to lead in a way with the digital art initiative here in Nebraska. So it means a lot to me that all of you are here we know the pandemic, uh, you know, the uptick and what's going on. Uh, thank you for coming. It just means a lot to me. Uh, so, you know, I've lived here in Nebraska 17 years. 
years, uh, this month, probably this week or last week. Uh, and I've tried to paint the landscape like, uh, you know, many, 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 many times. I moved here from Massachusetts and the Nebraska landscape is just really uh, beautiful. I love it. I don't get tired of it. Uh, but it's been really challenging. It really wasn't up to like maybe five or six years ago. I heard this quote, and I, I've read Willie Cather many times, uh, but I don't know why I missed this one. Uh, elsewhere, the sky is the roof of the world, but here, the earth is the floor of the sky. It totally makes sense. Because I was trying to paint the sky instead of paying attention to the ground and how important that just like flat plain is here in Nebraska. Or those rolling hills as you get up into the Bohemian Highlands or as you get out to the sand hills. So uh, I've traveled throughout the state to try and accomplish this. But my wife and my kids would confirm. I torture them sometimes because I'll be like, hey, uh, let's, you know, let's go like, it's only seven and a half miles to this really cool tree that I want to show you. And in the middle of Gibbon, Nebraska, I will drive there around the flood and I get there, I go, oh, I think they cut the tree down. Oh, shit. Well, there's a cool barn. Oh, that one's gone too. Well, we'll find another one, you know. So uh, that's kind of the investment I've had over time. But um, and one of the things is I haven't, I didn't ever get to know the people out there that well. I, you know, I've traveled the state, I've met people out there, I've been to some ranches and farms. But it wasn't until a friend, uh, Sue Ryber, she doesn't live on a farm out in Gibbon anymore, but she grew up there just down the street. I know her truth, Mona, and. Uh, yeah, you know, I showed up at her house one day, and I said, hey, can you show me around your farm? And it was like hanging out with my mother-in-law for a couple of hours. She just drove me around the farm all, like, forever. And we talked about, you know, that cool old fence, or that neat old barn, or the, the way, I, I remember it was January, it was like, everything looks orange, doesn't it? So, oh yeah, I love that, because, you know, the crops and this time, the name of Fowler, I remember this, this Joe Fowler, and there's some black Angus over here. Let me take it to this better spot so you can see that. So after that conversation, you know, and after like taking hundreds of pictures with Sue that day, and thousands over the time I've been here, you know, it wasn't until this moment that I took a picture of her Dutch barn, like perfectly straight on. I think Bucky guys sold it a few years ago for me. Uh, it was that I really, then I like Nebraska landscapes clicked for me. And I could create my version of them that I think were so you're seeing down here is sort of the manifestation of that. These are not painted from photos, although reference photos are sometimes used. I've just studied the subject enough as a, kind of a meditative thing. And so this show down here is the meditative, more introspective version. Uh, however, upstairs is a little different. If you haven't been upstairs yet, go check it out. Uh, have you guys ever like been driving down the road and you know when you get the windshield wipers going? and it's almost going to the music, but it's like off by a little bit, and you realize that you're paying attention to that, the snow coming at you in the landscape, and you go, oh fuck, I'm driving on the interstate. <laughs> uh, I gotta snap out of it. And, you know, do you ever have a favorite soundtrack that you drive around to, or you use on your hike, or on your bike ride, or anything like that? You know, I do, I think we all do. We're listening to different things. So the show upstairs is really about the idealized landscape. It's like an Albert Bierstadt painting, um, just, you know, animated. And I'm an animator, that's what I do. Uh, and, I, you know, I love setting things in motion. So, you know, like that moment where the weather's perfect and when the light at the golden hour is just right, you know, and when the wipers are like just finally getting in sync, it's there for a minute, it's temporary, and it's and that's what Upstairs is about. So thanks for coming out. Enjoy the show. Happy to take any questions or conversations with you now or if they're out there. Well, it's a little different in our case here because 
you know, we're not extorting people for that, that nervous blaster. Do you know uh, the famous Michael Jordan picture where he's pumped at the end after hitting that fadeaway at the top of the key? And I think it was the 1995 playoffs. NBA owns that. But you see it everywhere. So it's the same kind of it's the same kind of thing. Somebody owns it, it's available to everybody. So an NFT, when you buy it, it says Buck Keechel is the owner or Barbara is the owner. But you know, I as the artist give them a file if I want to, or I can give them a screen to play it on. Or not. Um, but Barbara could say, well, I like it, but you know, boy, Ethereum's up and somebody else wants to buy it, some, that other person can buy it and own it now, right, right afterwards. And the blockchain is just random people who are Bitcoin miners or data miners who are out there in the world that authenticate that transaction. So nobody can ever make it up and say somebody else actually owns it first. So the token, the non-fungible token is actually the artwork itself becomes the asset that you can trade. And I don't mind that really because, you know, all of you, like me, scroll through Instagram and look at cool stuff. How many of us are actually supporting those individuals who put a lot of time and money and effort into making that? So for a small fee, you could, you know, basically support that world. You, the artist, every time you sell it or somebody else after sells it, they'll get a little money back. Um, as well, and they could donate that or do whatever they want with that afterwards. So that's really kind of, in a nutshell, what an NFT is. I, I hope that helps.